Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Rome Total War, where Egypt, once our biggest threat, lies in ruins. And their situation is even worse than I really kind of thought about at the end of last time, so of course, they've got a huge problem, which is right now, they've only got two towns left, and I do mean like one town, and one, what even is that, that's... Either a, it's also got a port. Oh yeah, of course. I'm um, technically some of the towns on here actually do get ports down in this part of the world. It's just you know they literally can only trade with each other, which means it's not really that useful because you know like Petra already has a flipping land border with Memphis. So basically, it just links up Petra with like Thebes, and I think that's actually it. And then it links Bostra with Memphis and Thebes. Yeah, it's not very good, the ports down here. They don't necessarily generate that much money. That's probably just a large town. So Egypt's entire army is being paid for by these two large towns that aren't producing much money because this doesn't have a port at all and this has a port but it's probably not trading with anything because, yeah, rebel, me and me. So as a result, they've not got much money coming in. But they're having to pay for two relatively large armies. This one up here that's stuck not doing anything and this one over here that can't find anything useful to do. They're almost certainly in debt and going further and further into debt every every turn, so they can't train any new troops, which is why the pharaoh is down here completely unguarded. They can't afford to train him any bodyguards. Oh yes, that works out just right for me. So today we have got some mopping up operations to do down in the Middle East, but then we've got to turn our attention to something much more important, a much bigger threat. Other less Roman Romans, bloody Romans that aren't us, a eh? bloody Julia and bloody Scipionas. We need to figure out the best way to deal with them. Of course, we're not declaring war on them imminently, but it's time to start setting things up so that when we do, everything will swing nicely in our favour. And I've got a very different plan for both of them. But for the moment, at least, I think there's one more thing we can do during this turn, which is, yes, Thebes. Thebes is actually under siege right now, and is, yes, a very large amount of peasants. So let's just send our large army in there and take care of those bastards. I was actually producing rams, but I don't need them. I've got the oranges right here. Oh, hello. We have got a very, very big... That's the temple, isn't it? Yes, the temple city. Ah, oh, I'd forgotten that that was really quite cool and impressive in many ways. Uh, yeah, so Thebes, before it rebelled, was actually a really, really bloody impressive city, aside from the fact they actually only had a practice range. They never upgraded. Okay, so they upgraded the religion to full, and they upgraded the army barracks pretty much full, but practice range never got past just basic practice range. Oh, that's a shame. Still, I like temple cities. Yeah, this is basically the Egyptian equivalent of the Pantheon, if you like, where we've got this massive thing here. Tell you what, I'm not sure what the benefits associated with this are, but I might well choose to keep it, given there's no culture pentlers attached to it. Right, let's just go in the most direct way, straight through this wall that leads up to the plaza. Take out the towers, take out the walls, life will be good. Tower goes down, now just the walls, which go down in R. Oh, just go down in two strikes, marvellous. Now, where are the archers? Because these guys have got one unit of archers with them somewhere. Rebel general, archers, chariots. No sign of the archers up front, they're back here. Fine, and those are just short-range archers anyway. Let's bring my missile troops up front here, just ready to head those guys off. I've got long-range archers, and they don't, so the first thing I'd like to do is get my archers into a position where they can actually take a shot at their archers who have now moved up to here. Should be pretty close to doing that already, in fact. Yep, there we are. The bowmen are now in range. So, my long-range bowmen can totally just take some pot shots at the bowmen, and you guys can just do whatever you feel like, really. You guys just fire at will. So, in comes the fire, and their bowmen are going to get torn apart very quickly because they've got basically no armour. Oh, flipping dear. Right, that worked pretty well. Now, you guys just hold still and fire at will, please. Everyone just fire at will, drive them back from the breach. Life is about to get really, really sad for these skirmishes. Oh, this is my favourite thing. Just ridiculous amounts of indirect fire tearing apart basic crappy troops that don't happen to be wearing armour. Marvellous. Right, that's enough of that. Don't waste your arrows on those guys over there. Instead, I am going to send in Manius Barbatus, the guy we didn't really expect much from, but you know what? He's pleasantly surprised me. He can just go and mop up those guys, and anyone who comes to try and relieve the front gate will be torn apart by my archers. So in comes my general. He's just going to go and hit those guys. They'll break immediately, which is lovely, and probably, yes indeed, as I would have expected, they're sending some guys in to try and take care of this. And now, as soon as those are all mopped up, I'm just going to put these guys into fire at will. Fire at will, fire at will, fire at will, at that rabble general. So he's already dead. 
get my general over in this direction. And now, these guys are going to be shot in the side and the rear and everything from, like, all of the guys in the world. And they're just going to start melting so, so quickly. Lovely. Rebel general is just melting right away. May as well just kind of now take them on, given they're being shot in the back and they're already losing so much of their strength. Now my guys come in, smash into them, and they break immediately. Marvellous. Don't bother pursuing them. Now instead, just let my guys focus on these lot over here. More skirmishers just going to run in. My archers just going to start tearing them apart. Peasant skirmishers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I like watching this. It's fun. Right, into these skirmishers who are already badly damaged. They'll break immediately. Then I can just roll up the peasants too. Instant break. And straight into you. They're already wavering and instant break. Beautiful. Now, guys, stop firing if you'd be so kind. No, no, no. No more firing. Thank you. Just move a little bit further up instead. And I will wipe up these guys. Egypt can't resist sending up more troops to try and support. This time it's the chariots. Well, they are not going to do very well for themselves. Yep, they are falling apart. This is the most sensible way you can really use indirect fire around a city, by the way, because the enemy will back if they come under fire. But if you just send in a single unit that you think can take care of itself just to stand inside the city walls, they'll constantly try and move in to take out that one unit to see if they can kick it back out again. But as a result, you can bait them straight back into your indirect fire, and those peasants will go down very quickly. I just had an extremely rare game crash. You do not see that much from Road to the Lord. It's generally very, very stable. So sadly, I've just had to redo this battle. But my plan to release the hounds will not be denied. I'm releasing the hounds, damn it. Here we go. In come the puppies eating some lovely peasants. And hopefully they'll turn their attention to the archers. Go and eat the archers. Eat the archers. Do you want to eat the archers? No, they really don't want to eat the archers. Hopefully they'll finish eating these peasants. Oh, yeah. Oh, they are just bringing down the peasants. Go for the archers next. Go for the archers next. Archers next. That's right. Now, how much damage does a group of war dogs just do against basic archers? Oh, it's quite a lot and at no real risk to me. Love it. Ah, but interestingly, chariots do very well versus war dogs because the whole spiked thing where they just kill anything they run past actually does really well cutting down large numbers of dogs very, very quickly. Whereas the dogs can't really intelligently focus down the chariots. That's fun. Sent in my old Equites just before their retirement, just to speed things up a little bit. Lovely, everything's breaking there nice and fast. Just want to finish off the Bowman, really, given that's the only indirect fire they have, so I really just want to get those guys out of the way completely. Right, a bit of a slow grinding one, but the Rebel Generals just went down to enough Legionary Infantry. Pretty clean, we can just repair any the damage we did take. I mean, I know it's a waste to have kind of lost quite a few legionaries, but I can repair these guys. I can't repair the Prinkipers, so I may as well hold them back. Now, what state is this city going to be in? Because, of course, there's going to be no culture penalties, but... It's still angry. Potential for revolt? Oh, go on. Burn it to the ground. Repair everything that's been damaged during the revolts. Fine. And repair up those legionary cohorts. Now, that Temple City. Let's see how good this thing is. Public order bonus due to happiness, 35%. Public order bonus due to Lord, 25%. Population growth bonus 1%, public health bonus 10%. Okay, so probably that's actually just a pretty damn solid thing to have in general. In fact, in terms of the actual base happiness it's giving me, it's probably going to be, well, yeah, it's just, it's basically like the pantheon of Juno would end up, just with slightly more happiness and slightly less growth. But I'm actually kind of happy with that. I think I'm actually happy to let that stand. I think it is fair they do have a port. Actually, you know what? Trader first. Apparently these guys don't even have a basic trader, dear, oh dear. Right. Manius Barbatus, good work there. And with that, the Egyptian heartlands have all fallen into our hands. Very, very good indeed. Right, I think that's all I can do for this turn. So I'll end this turn off here. This fort is one turn to a surrender. I think that has to read zero before they actually attack me. So I'm not sure they're going to attack me yet. But that's fine. If they do, we'll just wipe them out to the last man. I'm more interested in what this force here is going to do next. So any major movement from the Romans? Oh no, they have decided to sally forth. Possibly this was the turn they were supposed to do. I can't remember whether it needs to read one or zero for them to sally forth. So basically these guys need to win or they die. But honestly, they've been weakened by the siege. When you're under siege, you just slowly lose strength to, I guess, like starvation or disease or something. So this is already a weakened force. It's got no commander. Spurious Scampion is not the best commander, but we've definitely got the better army here. The downside is when you're the force that's being sallied into, you don't get any setup time. Your army is just as it is and you just have to deal with it. So the moment this begins, the battle's just going to begin, and they're just going to start coming out. Right, let's see what we've got here. Ah, we've got the battering rams. <laughs> the battering rams we never actually used. Marvellous. 
So what have we got? I was worried there for a second. I just saw some green in the middle of the camera. I was thinking, oh dear, how did you guys get in there? I don't think you're going to have a good day. So now what we've got to do is, yeah, figure out what they're going to do first. And also, what's your commander again? What is your commander? He's the, ah, the chariots. Fine. So what we've got to do really is basically just smash into them as they come out. If we can just create a mass route close by to the gate, I'd be fine with that. So you guys just drop the rams straight away. That's fine. Lovely. So you guys have dropped the rams. Yeah, what I think I need to do is I just need to run forward and try and bottleneck them right here. So my infantry should probably just start running forward like crazy right now to this point here. And my archers all behind them. I've not got that many archers, but it'll have to do. Now just check where those are. Oh, for those who are asking, by the way, who want to know how I kind of get this display so I know where my troops are already deployed, um, you hold spacebar. This has to come up in the comments a few times, so that's how you do that. And then my cavalry just gets divided up in order to do a great big charge. So kind of one group of cavalry on one side over here. That's fine. Just stay away from the towers, actually. Just a bit further back just in case of the towers. And another big group on the other side. And also let's just have the hoplite to the back here just in case the chariots charge through. So we've got just some basic skirmishes there. That's fine. We'll just... The skirmishers decided to just sort of head through for everyone else. Okay. That's fine. I'm just going to send these guys forward. Let's see if we can... Ah, they're coming out the side gates as well. That's okay. All I need to do is just... Okay, the skirmishers are running off because they're still in skirmish mode. So that's fine. I'd rather not have you waste all of your, like, javelins and whatever. But if you must, that's fine. They'll back off almost immediately. There is technically a plaza inside this place, by the way. It's just generally it's not used for anything much. Right, get those guys out of there. Get these guys out of here. Uh, we're going to lose some cavalry taking out the chariots that are kind of coming out that way. Because, yeah, they're coming out every gate, which I wasn't really anticipating. I thought they'd just pile out the front way. More skirmishes just trying to get out this way. Where are these flipping chariots? Um, and where are the flipping hoplites? Oh, guys, come on. Just just get these guys out of the way, please. Thank you. I'd like everyone to come out the front door if you'd be so kind. Right, here we are. Chariots have started moving in on this side. So get my hoplites moving over in this direction. Uh, prepare reinforcements over here. If you guys want to move in, you're more than welcome to try. I've got some good things waiting for you here. Right, just get them into position. Get them into position. Right, 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 right. Yeah, get the spears down. Where are the chariots coming in first? They're coming over here. That's okay. Desert Axemen are coming out the front door, but they'll just be overwhelmed by numbers, so they'll break. Their morale's going to be terrible. Ferris Bowman around the side there. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I'm going to send one unit of Prinkipairs over in this sort of a direction just to take out these guys. And then I'm going to have cavalry slammed to the side as well. Uh, that should be enough to cause these guys to collapse pretty quickly. They're already shaken. They're outnumbered. They're wavering already. I'm going to take a lot of cavalry losses, but I've got a lot of spare cavalry here. So that will be fine. Uh, that's actually the only... Wait, hang on, you are... Oh, you're just light cavalry. Set... No, no, send the heavy cavalry to deal with the light cavalry. That's fine. That'll be easy. And send these Prinkipes in just to support for a second. Those are Desert Axemen. Focus your fire on the Desert Axemen for a second, please. These guys will break very quickly. Those guys have got no defense, so yep, they're already broken, so we'll just pepper them with more fire for a second. Pharaoh's Bowmen over there who worry me a little bit. Not so bad. What just broke there? That was... Oh! My own Roman cavalry broke its light cavalry. Well, that was just pathetic of you. Right, you guys, drop back over here. You guys, focus your fire on the Pharaoh's bowmen. I want those guys to go down before they start firing, please. We have got more over here. Oh, you, incidentally, uh, the hoplites, should now be coming over here in a hurry, please. You guys, get over here in a hurry. Start running before the chariots move in. Thank you. Pharaoh's bowmen under a lot of fire going down quickly. They're wearing that lovely little armor, but it's not that damn good. It can't stand up against repeated attacks from actual archers from all sides, especially when they're on the run. Right, my hoplites are moving into position to block these chariots over here from moving in. My infantry are doing their job. You see, they're struggling to just get out and draw up a battle line, which is exactly what I want. And my hoplites are now in the right position. Good. If the chariots come in and go for the flank, we are ready for them. Right, get my cavalry safely back here for the minute. I don't want them getting involved in any of this. Uh, so you guys just go over here. I just kind of want some heavy cavalry. Yeah, that's it. That's it, chariots. Into the impenetrable wall of spears with you. And in a second, looks like they are. They're going to take the bait here. 
and just go for the let the archers get their attacks in on the Nile Spearmen. No, you get back a bit, please. Actually, you know what? Let them bait them forward. Let the Arab cavalry, given they're already a damaged unit, just bait these guys forward. I want to draw this guy. I want to draw these guys in this direction. So they'll now come in this direction and they'll just run straight into there. You go. You see, they're responding to the attack from the Arab cavalry, and as a result, they've run straight into the hoplites. Boom. You know what, I should probably just let my Arab Cavalry do that all over. Let's just go and get these chariots and bring them in. I'm going to take a little bit of light damage from this tower, but that's fine. But I'm just going to basically try and draw these um, chariots straight into my hoplites. So just slam into the side of these guys, and now pull back over here, pull back over here, pull back over here. That's actually the leader right there. So I'm kind of hoping he'll respond. No, no, come on, come on, come on, come on, that's it. Wake up, wake up, wake up. I'm slamming into the side of you, it's serious and bad. There we are, we brought one of them down. He's got to respond to that. He's actually... Oh, oh, the Arab cavalry is fleeing. Well, chariots are scary. Right, guys, focus your fire on these here chariots, please. And if we're lucky, some of them will just go straight into the hoplites again. Just because, yeah, the game doesn't want them to run into the actual um, hoplites. It's just because they're such a big unit that covers so much space, some of them are just going to accidentally drift into the hoplites. So they don't really mean to. It's just going to happen anyway. Right, skirmish mode off, please. Just keep firing for the time being. And in comes a whole bunch of stuff there. Right, get a bit more heavy cavalry around the side here. Just in case. I don't want anything flanking around the edge. And in comes some... Um, that's Desert Cavalry, but it's not liking its life right now. Refocus our fire on that there, Desert Cavalry. And the general goes down. He judges straight into there. In comes some cavalry on the flank, but they're collapsing at the front. They're really running out of stuff very, very quickly indeed. We've got another unit of heavy chariots, but they're probably going to fall into the exact same trap. Can we bait them in? No, we can't because we're literally out of arrows. We have already fired all the arrows we have here. Marvellous. Chariots coming in for the flank because they desperately, desperately want to hit this cavalry. But if I just pull my cavalry more in this direction, they'll... Oh! That just broke immediately. Right, this actually is not a good angle, but lots of them will just run straight into the the spearmen. Oh, this is going to be bad. They're actually approaching from the flank, which is kind of annoying. Right, this is the one way they could actually do any form of serious damage. I'm just going to charge some... Oh, dear. Did you guys just break? No, you didn't break. You didn't break. They held, but they lost a lot of men. The chariots are now fling. Right, that's the last unit of full strength chariots. That's desert uh, cavalry. So I'm just going to send my own heavy cavalry out to take care of that. Because heavy versus light cavalry, that will not be a problem at all. They'll do a lot of damage because these guys hit hard, but they've got no defense. So I should probably actually send some reinforcements over in that direction as well. Go on, let's send some reinforcements over there. Let's just send all the cavalry thundering in that direction for a second. Nope, they've already broken. Doesn't even need it. And a lot of light cavalry goes down. More tries to run over here. Get back, get back, get back. Let's actually let, if we can, the chariots run into the hoplites again. Everyone back, please. And a couple, yeah, a couple of them are going to walk straight in. Nope, they've already broken. Never mind. At this point, screw it. We just need to finish them off. We may as well just ram into them. They'll break almost immediately when we do. We'll take some casualties doing it just because of the spikes, but it'll be fine. Everyone, just take care of everyone, please. Let's just wrap up the cavalry forces. At this point, the Egyptians are running out of what is recognisably an army. I'm just sending my cavalry around, mopping up anything that steps out of the side. They're going to take some light knocks from these towers. But these are basic crappy towers. I'm really not too concerned about the damage they're going to be doing. I'd rather just ride down the cavalry just to get it off the field. There we are. That's this flank seized now. If they try and come out of this gate, I'm just going to ride straight into them. Yeah, you know what? Good luck with this. I've just got cavalry. Yeah, that's right. You just try and turn around. Chariots aren't good at turning around, you stupid bastards. I am ever going to get the general out of there just in case he gets unlucky and actually were to kind of run into an actual spike from a chariot. So I'm going to send him to be safe at the back. Okay, what have they got left that poses any threat whatsoever? Handful of heavy chariots that might come and take on my cavalry at the side. If they do, we'll just slam into them. I think there's one unit of Null Spearmen still pretty strong fire. We'll just have to use our infantry for that. That'll be fine. And speaking of those chariots, here they bloody come. Let's let them come outside. As soon as they're outside, we'll just rush them. You know what? Screw it. I'm just sending the Equites into the camp. The Equites can just go in the camp and finish off the bloody chariots. In you go, lads. Uh, the Null Spearmen and all that. No, they were coming outside. They've changed their mind. My Equites have now infiltrated the camp and are just going to go and hunt down the remaining chariots and cavalry. We've just got the numbers advantage. Shouldn't be too difficult to do. Though saying that, they do have Eastern Mercenaries who are still Spearmen. Okay, I may have just slightly overextended here. You know what, guys? Get over here for a second, please. Oh, I've, I've really overextended here. Those gates are well. They're closed for now, but I suspect... No, guys, you don't want to be taking on Eastern. Oh, dear. 
I may have just actually flipping proved the value. Oh, that's going to be embarrassing if I take a loss to Eastern Mercenaries. These Eastern Mercenaries actually broke while taking on flipping horses. The one thing they're supposed to be good at taking out. <laughs> just in case you needed reminding how terrible Eastern Spearmen and Eastern Mercenaries are. Yeah, they just broke taking on Light Cavalry. The one thing they're supposed to actually be able to take care of. Guys, get out of there. Get out of there. There's flipping phalanxes over there. Don't get involved. I think we've wiped out the actual chariots to the last man at this point. Lovely. And, yeah, now there's nothing left but just a handful of spearmen that don't really know if they can approach. And, ooh, Pharaoh's bowmen probably firing at me or firing at something at least. Right, um, somebody, can someone actually go and get one of the rams? What's that, what's that over there? Ooh, dogs! I forgot I'd brought dogs. Right, bring up the dogs! Now, technically, none of these gates actually belong to me at this point, so we're just desperately trying to keep away from the Nile Spearmen. If I can, you know what, let's take out the Pharaoh's Bowmen. If we can just wipe those guys out, that'll be useful. No, no, guys, guys, look, look, look how there's a straight, there's a straight line. There's a straight line, guys, straight line. You're gonna want to charge, incidentally. Actually, the question now is, can we win this fight just with flipping light cavalry before we can actually get the ram up to the walls? Because I suspect the Nile Spearmen are about to get themselves surrounded, which works for me. No, no, oh, darn it. They saw the trap and they backed off, clever guys. Or did they? Did they see the trap? All right, go, 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 go. That's it, that's it. Come over here, come over here, come over here, come over here. And surround them, surround them, surround them, surround them, surround them, surround them. Every side, every side, every side. Every side and see if we can get them to break. No, no spearmen will do the job, damn it. Even though, actually, they don't have their spears up right now. They do not have their spears up right now. We might just be able to get these guys to break because they cannot reform the phalanx. They're too much out of shape. They're not actually lined up and they're broken. Yep, I think we're just going to win this with flipping Equites. Oh, that's embarrassing for Egypt. Defeated by flipping Equites. I just put these guys in to throw them away. Right, one of the Hastati has the ram. So now we just need to see if we can finish off the tiny bit that's left with Equites before the ram reaches the gates. Because right now no one else can actually get inside this camp. Right, just deal with the last few Nile Spearmen. There's eight of them. They're not in a phalanx. They've been pushed too much out of it. I think we should just be able to murder them. Eastern mercenaries. One Nile Spearman. Yep, the Equites are just going to win this. <laughs> I threw these guys in and thought, oh no, they're all going to die here, aren't they? No. No, they're not. Spurus Scapula is even now, because he has no idea what's going on inside the gates a lot. He is just writing the letters of condolences to, you know, the families of the people who are part of those units of Equites. Little does he know they've actually just gone and bloody won. So, that is one big Egyptian army taken care of. Lovely. And no movement from the other one by the sounds of it. Ooh, hello. We have got ourselves a suitable husband. He's 30, which is a little bit on the older side. But, good news. Command to, yeah, good commander, true Roman bureaucrat. Sure. Welcome to the family, uh, Publius Sergius. Senate wants me to take Petra. Fine, we can take her of that. And he, ooh, he's in Athens. That's a really good place for him, actually, because over in Athens, we're just quietly, quietly, quietly building up some pretty good quality armies, actually. No one, you know, no one go into why, but we are building up some good quality armies here. Go on, have a Priest of Mars, kid. You will, you deserve it. Oh yeah, Nero Brutus, the bold guy who was inspired by Julianus Vatinius. He's up in Thessalonica. Right, in that case, Cassius the Lewd, you go down to Sparta, because if the plays of Aristophanes are to be believed, they did get up some rather lewd stuff down there, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, you stay here for a second, because there is an academy here, so you can learn some basics of management there. Ah, now this is good. Popularity has been gained with the masses. The mob now shout your name from the rooftops and name their children in your honour. When the mob is on your side like this, perhaps ultimate power isn't so far away after all. Okay, how good are we talking here, Senate floor? <gasps> 10 out of 10. Okay. That's intriguing. Are we actually ready to do this, potentially? That's the Priest of Mars. That's the marriage celebration. Systematic information. Nothing major there. Or their faction announcements. What have we got? Ooh, someone new coming in. Gnaeus Silvanus. Where did you come from? I don't know. I can't remember anyone called Silvanus. I'm sure you're important, whoever you are. Lentulus Brutus has picked up some basic stuff. Ah, Julianus Scapula, the worst of the Julianus. As, as history will recall him, Julianus the Terrible, who I sent over to Pergamum just to basically manage it. Are you any better than you used to be? Anger, unusual, heartless. Well, on the plus side, at least you're an expert on natural philosophy, I guess. 
And with your Spice Merchant and your whatever and your Priest of Mercury, you can at least get a good trade income going from this city, which is nice. So with popularity at 10 out of 10, something very, very interesting has just happened, which is, at this point, I can take any army I want, point at the Julii, and the game used to say, oh, you can't do that, you're not popular enough. But now, now I am. I can, anytime I want, I can launch a surprise attack against the Julii. I do not want to do this right this second. You don't want to start this war until you are ready for this war. But now it is time to start thinking about what our next logical moves are and time to start actually laying things out ready for that inevitable war. Now, hilariously, the game's realised just how badly in trouble the Egyptians are is now just throwing new generals at them. So this army up here has just gained a general out of nowhere. This town over here, Bostra, has just gained a general out of nowhere. Unfortunately, I have a really, really good assassin nearby. So Valerius the Killer, you just go and deal with that kid the game has just spawned in. And he is going to have been... Oh my goodness, he got killed because 95% chance because Valerius the Killer and his comedy retinue. Oh, he's getting old though, he's 54. Oh, poor guy, okay, fine. We should actually start, you know, training an apprentice. Possibly your pet monkey, your catamite, your skilled courtesan. One of these people needs to replace you, Valerius the Killer. We can't do without you, damn it. So that's that kid out of the way already. Beautiful. Now the armies of Spurious Scapula... Probably the best thing we can do is just basically get that force moving down south because though it's a bit damaged It can just go straight to Bostra really so let's get that force moving over Here build a watchtower while we're passing by and yeah, we will just basically head straight to flipping Bostra What's the fastest way to get there straight over the desert apparently though possibly that's just because this force is in the way We might need to clear them out Sadly for the Egyptians, the rebel forces that are spawning in their territory are now tougher than the actual towns themselves. Alpius Victor doesn't have a great army present, so he should just go and deal with this small force up here, just to clear that out of the way to make sure they don't backstab us. So yep, he can chase that guy down this turn, and how good are you by the way? You were just promoted- oh yeah. This guy was just promoted out of nothing, you can tell, because he's just got some basic starting traits. Been in the wars, he's a bit tough, bureaucrat commands and a good commander. I don't think that's necessarily going to help you that much, I'm afraid. Though I will say, we're actually going to lose quite a lot of men during this fight, because, uh, obvious victory, you just know Julianus Vatinius, are you? Because we don't actually have, uh, yeah, we have no hoplites, and we've only got one basic crappy archer. So those chariots are actually going to hurt us quite a bit, but never mind. Right, not perfect, we're just going to have a lot of infantry drawn up nice and thick with the very limited indirect fire we do have right at the front. And we'll just have to hope that works, really. This rock might be helpful though. If we draw it right next to that, that'll stop the actual chariots flanking us if we can bait them forward, or at least flanking us on one side. That could be useful. No, sadly, if I had modern Roman archers with the long range, I might be able to pull it off, but I'm not going to be able to actually uh, bait them close enough. So we're just going to have to go a bit closer. I want to bait forward something. Just get my archers in range of something, at least. Right, income chariots number one. Just let the infantry soak up most of the damage and just smash some horses into the rear of them. Break them down. Yeah, we're taking a fair bit of damage here, but it's fine. Smash those guys. They've already been smashed apart. Lovely. Chase them down. Looks like we've just got the speed advantage there. My archers are almost certainly now firing on the Nile Spearmen. They've got the uphill advantage, so they'll do some good damage there. Back off over here. Clearly, we're not going to chase down any more of those guys. The Egyptian general is just sort of not sure whether he wants to do this or not. But he doesn't really have a choice because I've already chased him here. So he can't flee even if he wanted to. Lots of good damage being done from the high ground over there. Let's simply get our horses round to the rear. Slam into the back of these guys and they'll break immediately. Lovely. The chariots could do a charge but they're generally slow and unwieldy when it comes to the charge. Yep, into them, into them, into them. Let's just finish those guys off before they actually get away. Lovely. My horses are going to take a load of damage from my own troops irritatingly but no matter. I'd rather just get that phalanx off the field now. Right, that'll do. Get some horses back over here. Chariots, not sure what they want to do next. Let's just get my, yep, get my cavalry back in this direction. Do you guys actually want to attack? No, don't. Okay, skirmish mode off, please. Skirmish mode off. I just want you to fire on the chariots. Is that going to be enough to bait them back forwards? No, tragically not. Right, everyone back into your formation that you were in before. Nice. And now, now the archers are in position. Good, good. Get some cavalry around the outside here. And, oh, they're breaking immediately. Nice. Oh, I'm liking that. Now, now there's nothing but the actual general himself. He's just going to smash through these uh, mercenaries straight into my flipping infantry. Then we're just going to surround him with cavalry and he'll break immediately. Yeah, my guys will try and retreat. That'll actually draw the general deeper into my own mercenary lads. My cavalry are coming up on the rear. Send the Thracians in to support. Why not? 
just kind of provide a bit of extra firepower. And now we just close the trap, so when they do inevitably break, they can't escape. And in come my cavalry in the rear there. Lovely. He in a minute, yep, he's already wavering. He realises he's surrounded. He will break and then we'll just murder him to the last man. Yep, done. And now there's no escape for him because we've already trapped him in. Now what's left? Ah, there's a unit of Nubian spearmen over there. Marvellous, the worst spearmen of all. There's some basic chariots on there, but I think my archers are about to actually finish those guys off for good because they're actually firing them from the high ground there. Yep, those chariots are... Yep, the chariots are dead. Chariots are dead. Focus your fire on the Nubian spearmen. This fight's as good as over. Just wait for the first round of arrows to come in. In they come. And now into the rear, they should break immediately. There we go, perfect timing. Right, continue the fight, continue the fight, continue the fight. Move the arch so they don't keep firing. And that should be pretty much wiped out to the last man. The general is dead. Over 85% of the force must be dead by now. Yep, 96 and 97 in fact. So that army will cease to exist. Marvellous. A little bit scruffy. Honestly, I actually took less uh, casualties to my front runner than I was expecting to from that many chariots when I had no flipping hot blights. I will very gladly take only 169 kills on the other side. So that's him taken care of. Opius Victor, well done there. And of course... That means we have got us as well. We've got a faction there, a pharaoh in waiting. And you know how Julianus Vitinius feels about pharaohs and pharaohs in waiting. Now, it's a bit of a scruffy force here with Julianus Vitinius, but I think it'll just have to do. So we'll take that entire force out of Jerusalem. And we'll just chase that guy. What? Wait, where did he just go? Wait, I clicked too fast and it sped up his retreat animation. And now I've no bloody idea where he just went. Right, meanwhile, just transfer troops down from Sidon, including, of course, pigs. Very, very important pigs. We can get uh, cavalry down there. Ooh, can we not get infantry down there? Can you actually get here? Yes, you can. Good. Very importantly, the pig forces can actually get here. Obvious Victor, I think you're required just to stabilise Jerusalem. Thank you. Your army, meanwhile, can head into Sidon for retraining, if at all possible. May as well just start merging the Prinker pairs, just get them back up to strength and then just get rid of one unit. That is, yep, that's fine. Get rid of you. Well done. Good service, etc, etc. And, ooh, Salamis. Salamis is ready for its port. Okay, so that goes up for, oh, <laughs> its first port is going to produce a thousand trade. I love Salamis. Salamis is great. And this is a diplomat here. Why are you there again? I can't even remember why he was bloody there. Right, let's get him on the mainland then. Ah, uh, yes, of course. And we do indeed have a brand new army ready to go, ready to move down on Siwa. Perfect. Because the thing is, where I actually kind of draw the line here, because we're going to actually have a front line in the south with the Scipionis, which I wasn't really expecting. I was expecting the Civil War to begin before we actually did that, because I wasn't really expecting the Scipionis to advance this far, and I wasn't actually expecting to be in a position to take Siwa. I was expecting just kind of, you know, the war with Egypt to be in its late stages by the time the Civil War began. So now we've got a choice, which is I could just leave this town be, well, one, a perfect situation. It could just be a buffer state. Then, yeah, if neither of us take it, then there's just a buffer between me and the Scipiones in the south. That's quite a big buffer, which is quite useful, because then the actual kind of point that I've got that touches on the Scipiones is just Carthage, which I want to be the actual kind of front line between me and the Scipiones. That works just fine. Two, second best scenario, I take it, because then, basically, I just hold against the Scipiones down here in the south. The problem is that's a large town, and because it's a large town, it's only got wooden walls, but I could get it up to a city pretty quickly. Yeah, I could just pour troops into it and kind of break them apart in order to, like, get it up to 6,000 and just build a small wall. So I would like a proper place to hold out here, but if I let them take it, the option three, which is the worst option, then from there, they can attack Alexandria, they can attack Memphis, they can attack Thebes. I'd need to keep three decent standing armies just to kind of hold off against the forces advancing from one single town which is not what I want to do at all so as a result I should probably yeah I should probably just go and take this town with the force that I've actually brought down there and then we just hold out down there we hope that most of their attention falls on Carthage and they kind of fall back to deal with Carthage another problem that I'll cause for them but if need be, we have a secondary front here at Siwa, which I will just artificially boost up to 6,000 citizens, and thus a minor city, and thus build stone walls as quickly as possible. Oh, there he is! Sorry, I was looking all around for him. He was right flipping there. He was just hiding under my nose. He just fled around the corner to flipping Jerusalem, exactly where Julianus Vitinius bloody started from. Well, that's bloody irritating. Right, I don't know what your next move is, but I would like Julianus Vitinius to flipping murder you. I mean, he doesn't have to. If you really just want to kind of hang out here, that's fine. We will just take all of your town one by one, you'll turn into a rebel and then we can just flipping buy you if that's what you really want. 
Julianus Vitinius would obviously rather handle this, you know, honourably like men, as you can tell from the number of stars next to him. Just look at it. Look at the number of stars next to you versus the number of stars next to me. All right, you cannot take on Julianus Vitinius. Have you got anything new, by the way? You've probably got even flipping better. Oh, he's a poor farmer. Julianus Vitinius has no time for farming. Who's too busy being goddamn Roman Superman? So, ladies and gentlemen, as the Egyptians cling on for dear life, and I think very soon we will be able to take their cities off them, and there is nothing they will be able to do to stop them. Next time, perhaps, might well be the death of Egypt for good. We might take their cities. We might just eliminate all their leaders. Their cities will just fall into rebel hands. Then they should be even easier to take off them. And after that, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to have a discussion. A discussion about the tactics I've got in mind for dealing dealing with the Romans, because it is time for us to roll against our Roman enemies, formerly allies, but were they ever really our allies? I don't think they ever really were. So we will discuss how we are going to do that, ladies and gentlemen, our war plan for taking out Rome and becoming the dominant, unquestioned force in the Mediterranean. But in the meantime, I've been John, this has been many a true note, this has been Rome Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Has he got nipple tassels on? There is nothing less intimidating than a fat bloke with nipple tassels. I wouldn't kill him, we're standing on top of a pool of oil and he's holding a torch. I'm fighting the same guy three times at the moment. It is actually the same bloke. It's cocking Scotland, not the waste beyond the wall. This isn't Game of Thrones, it's just Britain.